So now that we know that we can add and subtract on both sides by the same thing, and multiply and divide on both sides by the same thing, uh, to be able to get just x equals a number, so we can really easily read off our solution, um, we can use these actually together to help us to be able to solve uh, more complicated things like 2x plus 1 equals 9. So if I want to solve this guy, um, I want to get the x, 1x by itself. So the first thing I look at, I see I've got a, a plus 1. Um, if I divided by 2 on both sides, I'd have to not only divide the 2x, but I'd also have to divide the 1, and that makes kind of a mess. But I can get rid of that one. I can subtract one from both sides and make it go away. So, I subtract one from both sides. Okay. I get 2x plus 1 minus 1. Well, plus 1 minus 1 is 0. So, all I'm left with on this left-hand side is 2x. And 9 minus 1 just gives me 8. And, well, look at that. That's pretty nice, pretty simple. Um, I want to undo this 2 times x. So what I do, I divide by 2, because 2 divided by 2 gives me the 1 that I'm looking for. So I end up with just 1x, or x, same thing, because 1 times any number is just itself. And 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. And so I have my answer. And you could definitely check it. You do 2 times 4 plus 1 should give me 9. 2 times 4 is 8. And it is true, 8 plus 1, in fact, gives me 9. So there you go. We use both the addition and multiplication property um, for equations uh, to solve our 2x plus 1 equals 9. So that one's not too bad. Um, but what if I throw something more complicated than there, like 3 times x minus 5 equals 30. So 3 times x minus 5 equals 30. Hmm. Well, you can approach this a couple different ways. So I look over here and I say, I've got something kind of complicated. But in the first video, we learned how to simplify algebraic expressions. So that allows me to rewrite this in a little bit simpler way. So I see this three times this quantity. I look at that and I say, hmm, I can use the distributive property there. And so I can rewrite this side as three times x minus three times five gives me 15. And it still should be equal to 30 because this guy is e equal to the one above. All right, and so now this looks just like, uh, or very similar to the equation that we just solved. So I see this 15, that's in the way, but I know I can add 15 to both sides if I want. I'm allowed, as long as I do it to both sides. Okay. And so I end up with 3x equals 45. And then my last step, I need a 1 x, and I've got 3, so to make that 3 go away, I divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 gives me my 1x that I wanted, and 45 divided by 3 gives me my 15. Um, so we solved it. We got x equals 15, and again, I can check my work. I get 3 times 15 minus 5 should give me 30, and if you check it out, it's sure enough, it works. So you could have gone about this a little bit of a different way. You don't, you don't have to solve equations um, exactly the same way every time. It's the nice thing about it, um, as long as you're following all the rules. And so the rules say I can multiply or divide um, by whatever I want on both sides. So something we could have done here, instead of distributing the 3, we could have multiplied by one-third, and g, why would you want to do that? Well, what happens when you, um, what happens uh, when you multiply three by one-third? You just get one, and so what we're left with is just one x 
minus 5. And 30 times a third gives me 10. You can think of it as 30 divided by 3. Well, this becomes x minus 5 equals 10. And now I could just add 5 to both sides. And look at that. We got exactly the same answer. So solving equations, um, <coughs> it's mostly just making them as simple as, making each expression on each side as simple as possible, and then using that addition and multiplication principles to be able to simplify it down until you have 1x on one side and the number on the other side. And that is pretty much it for solving equations.